So this is our statics problems for MS-171. We're going to be taking a look at beams, and here's a couple of different beams that we have. We are going to be restricting our discussions to simply supported beams, so this one right here. There's many other different kinds of beams, though, and you'll be seeing them in your mechanics course. We're going to be looking at the different types of loads that a beam can have, and we have static loads, i.e. things that are stationary, not moving, and we have dead, live, dynamic, and impact type loads, and again, you'll cover this more in your mechanics courses. So here's a load. You can see how it's pushing down on the beam. We then also have forces called reactions, and reactions are occur that in a support and response to a given load. So here's an example here in our simply supported beam, the upward force here on the left, that is considered a reaction. Now we're going to be looking at something called a moment, and a moment is another kind of force. It is the tendency of a force to twist or turn or rotate an object. The formula for a moment is just moment around a particular point is equal to the force times the distance to the turning point, so the distance from that force to the actual turning point. And our SI units, our units are going to be in newtons slash meters, because of course force is in newtons, and our distance will be measured in meters. We again have different types of bending that can happen. You're going to have positive or negative bending, but again you'll cover that in mechanics. So we're going to be looking at equilibrium properties for a simply supported beam. So equilibrium of forces, we've seen this before when we did vectors. The sum of the forces in the y direction add up to zero, or we can take a balancing perspective, and the upwards forces balance the downward forces. We can also take a look at the forces in the x direction, or also they have to add to zero, or we can say that the right moving forces are balancing the left direction forces. We also, though, have a third property for equilibrium, and that's equilibrium of moments. So we can say that the sum of the moments around a point P, or around a turning point P, add to zero. Or again, we can take the balance perspective. The sum of the moments around P in the clockwise direction have to be equal to or balance out the sum of the moments around turning point P in the clockwise direction. Some conventions have the counterclockwise direction as a positive moment and the clockwise is negative, but depending on your application you might find that these signs are different. This is one of the reasons why I actually prefer using the balance method rather than the sum of the moments. Again, when you go to industry though, you'll use whatever convention they decide. Again, our formula is moments is force times distance, and our units are newton meters. So when we're looking at simply supported beams, we're going to use these different properties to solve for any unknown forces. So here's an example. I've got a simply supported beam. I have a load of 2 kilonewtons, 5 kilonewtons, and 1 kilonewton. I have an unknown reaction A on the left-hand side, and an unknown reaction B on the right-hand side. And we want to actually calculate what are each of these unknown reactions. We're going to pick a turning point, and it's very important to recognize that when you pick a turning point in order to calculate your forces and moments, it should be where there's an unknown force. So we wouldn't choose point F1 or F2 or F3 because we know those forces. We should pick either the reaction B or the reaction A. I'm going to pick the reaction A just to make it a little simpler for us. Now that we have that turning point picked though, we need the distance from that turning point to all our different forces. So this is nicely done in a table so we can see for force 1 the distance from the turning point is 2 meters, and that we just read off. So there's our force, and there's our distance. For force 2, well the distance there is, again that's given in our problem, 6 meters, so there's our force, there's our distance. For force 3, there's the distance that we have to calculate. Now this one we don't have it given, so we have to get the calculation. We know that the total span of our beam is 10 meters, so we can go 10, take away 1, and that will give our distance of 9 meters. So we also have to include our reaction B4 force. So we can see that that's the entire span of our beam, which of course was the 10 meters. So there's our reaction B, which is unknown, at 10 meters. We can also include our reaction A, and since our turning point is actually at reaction A, 
our distance there is just zero. Now what we need to do is determine if the moment of each force is going to be clockwise or counterclockwise. And again, we could use the positive or negative, but you know, remember what I said before, those conventions could differ depending on your industry. So let's just look at clockwise or counterclockwise. So for my force 1, since it's pushing down, it's going to want to tend to turn the beam this way, which of course is the clockwise direction. Force 2 and 3 are also pushing down, so they're also going to be in the clockwise direction. But then my reaction B is pushing up, so it's going to be pointing in the counterclockwise direction. Now we can use our equilibrium of moments property. So remember that is the balance. The clockwise moments have to balance the counterclockwise moments. We only had the one counterclockwise, so we'll expect one on this side. Let's put them in. So there's our force 1 times this distance, force 2 times this distance, force 3 times this distance, and of course reaction B times this distance. Why is there no moment due to reaction A? Well remember we have this as 0, the distance, so 0 times RA is just 0. Putting in our numbers, we can see that we have numbers for each of these three moments that are going clockwise, and we have an unknown here. This is a linear equation, which we can rearrange and solve for our reaction at B is 4.3 kilonewtons. Once we have that, we can use our equilibrium of vertical forces property. So the forces up have to balance the forces down. So the ups are the RA and RB, and the downs are the force 1, 2, and 3. Putting in our numbers, well, RA is unknown. We just got RB, so there's the 4, 3. And of course, the downward 1, 2, and 3 are 2 kilonewtons, 5 kilonewtons, and 1 kilonewton, respectively. And again, we have a linear equation with a single unknown, rearranging, and we get our reaction A is 3.7 kilonewtons. So there's our two answers. Notice how we didn't use the sum of the forces in the x direction, either balancing out right and left, or that they add to zero. This is a simply supported beam, so there's only forces going up or going down, and of course the, the moments, there's none right or left. So something to really pay attention to, the very first step of this process is you have to pick a turning point, and always remember, where there is an unknown. If you pick it at a known, you're going to wind up getting equations with two variables in it, which of course you won't be able to solve.